Welcome to BMW Today. My name is Ede Weyretter. I'm a trainer and BMW driving experience instructor. And today's chapter is all about famous BMW art cars. My guest today is Thomas Guest. Hello, Thomas. Hi there, Ede. Thomas, are you the boss of BMW Classic Cars? Uh, no such luck, I wish. But I'm in charge of the BMW art car series as well as BMW Group's cultural engagement worldwide. Oop. Thomas, uh, there is two legends and one masterpiece here. The M1 yes. painted by Andy Warhol. Mm -hmm. Is that the most expensive car BMW has? It is. That is none of your business, first and foremost. And, you know, we don't want to talk about prices because, you know, if we are looking at the artwork like this, what does the price tell you about the significance of this amazing car? But, you know, as you asked, you know, there's some people that said that this is not only the most expensive BMW, but actually the most expensive car on planet Earth. Ooh. Yeah. All right. How, how was this car created? Well, to create the most expensive car on planet Earth, Warhol took himself 28 minutes. You know, he flew in with his entourage, came to Munich and painted this car in the paint shop of Walter Maurer. Warhol sent in some, some designs before. You know, he came up with a camouflage pattern. Camouflage 1979, World War II, Germany, you know, didn't go over that well um, when he opened up these connections. So um, he actually decided that he was going to come over. Came with his entourage, came to the paint shop, and then, you know, when you, when you really look at the car right here, onto the wet paint, what he did, because he did it so fast, was that he turned around the brush and scratched on the wet surface. So that creates all these patterns. And as you know, this car is more than 500 horsepower, you know, goes over 300 kilometers an hour. And Warhol actually said that he wants all these colors to blur when the car is racing by you during the greatest endurance race on the planet, the 24-hour race of Le Mans. Thomas, how does this come together, art and BMW racing? Yeah, this series you know, didn't come into being because PR and marketing people were putting their heads together thinking, how can we introduce BMW to the arts? It actually happened on the racetrack. Uh, Hervé Poulain was passionate about racing, passionate about the arts, and Jochen Neerpasch, you know, the founder of BMW Motorsports, they got to know each other, and Hervé Poulain actually asked him in 1975 whether he could join the BMW um, race team by having a BMW painted by the great painter Alexander Calder. And Jochen Neerpasch was crazy enough, if you allow me, to say yes to this idea. And ever since then, the BMW art car, started, art car series started to kick off. So this was also racing? Yes, this was racing in 1979, came in second in its class. What would have been happened if this car would have been crashed? Well, you know, that is always the risk that you're taking. Of course, the painters, they always create um, two or three models. You know, if, if, if parts get, uh, get ripped apart or if they get um, uh, destroyed during the race, then you will be able to put a new part on. So that is part of the thing. So would, has Warhol designed more than one? No, he just designed this car. That's it. You know, these BMW art cars are so unique. That's what makes them so priceless, of course. And if you look at what um, Warhol did at the very end, when he was done, you know, being a machine that he always wanted to be, but here being an actual painter, creating a painter on an industrial design object, he used his fingers and, um, design and, and signed the car right here, Andy Warhol, you know, when he was done in this paint shop outside of Munich um, upon completion of the car. That is crazy. All of those BMW art cars are race cars. I wish I could say yes, but uh, no. You know, at the beginning, the trajectory, all these cars were racing in Le Mans with Jeff Koons, uh, with Jenny Holzer, with, uh, with Chao Fei, with John Baldessari. We, we went back into racing. But I believe in the 80s and also in the early 90s, BMW was branching out. It was becoming a hugely successful international company. And I believe that, um, you know, the markets were asked, you know, to provide their own BMW art cars. And those were regular series cars created by amazing artists such as the Ndebele tribal artist from South Africa, Esther Malangu, or the Aboriginal artist Michael Jagamara Nelson in Australia. Great additions to the BMW art car series, of which there are 19. You know them all. Unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> That's going to have a quick Q&A session. <laughs> there will be a test. All right. right. There it is. <laughs> the BMW 3 liter CSL from Alexander Calder. Alexander Calder, amazing car, the first one, you know, Without this car, there wouldn't be a BMW art car series. And his sculptures were always, always called mobiles. So that's what it is, a mobile car, a mobile artwork, a rolling sculpture. How about Frank Stella's same vehicle, 3 liter CSL? Frank Stella paid tribute to the engineers by putting this blueprint onto the car. Okay, Roy Lichtenstein. Roy Lichtenstein, uh, you know, put a setting sun on the one side and a rising sun on the other side to pay homage to the 24-hour race of Le Mans. By the way, Frank Stella became a race driver after creating the car before Lichtenstein's. He knows it all. 
and the Warhol M1. Well, it's right here. We got it. And Fuchs, he painted a 635 CSI. Next. Oh, you don't like that one. Uh, not such a favorite. <laughs> uh, Robert Rauschenberg, also 635 CSI. Rauschenberg, also great artist. Yes, um, he put uh, uh, all these art historical references around this car, which he created in Captiva on an island in Florida. And he said when it was delivered to his studio, it was all white. And it felt like uh, he was almost feeling so romantic about the car when it was delivered to his studio. <laughs> an M3 of Nelson. Well, Michael Giacomara Nelson, amazing Aboriginal artist from Australia, and he put all these ancient um, uh, symbols and figures onto the car, which is a great addition to have. Okay, then I got Ken Dunn, an M3. Ken Dunn, same thing, Australian artist, um, paying tribute to the colors of his country. Tatsu Kayama. Modern airbrush, ancient techniques, golden car, what's not to like? César Manrique. César Manrique. Amazing colors, great design, good car. Pink, the Z1. Drumming and drinking and creating these Neanderthal stick figures on a red Z1, good car. Um, Esther Maslango. Esther Maslango is the patron saint of South Africa. An amazing car to have in the edition. She's the first woman artist to ever tackle the subject matter. All right, Sandro Chia on the M3 GDR 92. Sandro Chia, a lot of faces on that car looking right back at you. David Hockney. David Hockney, one of the greatest artists alive right now, uh, put a little dog in the back because he loved his dog so much and he thought of the car while driving you know, through the landscape of California. Jenny Holzer. Jenny Holzer is our return to Le Mans. In 1999, we won Le Mans with that very car. Jenny Holzer put her amazing truisms on the car, like what urge will save us now that sex won't and um, protect me from what I want. An amazing sentence to put onto a race car. That's crazy. Olaf Eliasson. Olaf Eliasson created um, a hydrogen car as an art car. It's a walk in freezer with thousands of icicles hanging from this car. It's actually a car that breaks with the art car series anything that came before, but it actually continued after him. Jeff Koons, M3. Amazing design, he was delving into advertisements for racing in the 70s. You see it right here on the cover of that book. That is part of his car. Um, many people love it. Um, it was also racing at Le Mans, and he chose the starting number 79 because he's so much infatuated with Andy Warhol that he wanted the, the number in which Andy Warhol's car actually raced in 1979. So you have that great inner connection between those cars that are not apparent at first glance. What a cultural scene that is. Okay, 2016, Baldessari. John Baldessari passed away in early 2020, still miss him dearly, put a red dot right on the roof of the car because he couldn't attend the 24 hour race in Daytona and he said, I'm gonna look at it you know, from my uh, television uh, set in California. And in order for him to find the car with all the other cars, that's the reason he put the red dot on it. Pure genius. And the final one, Zhao Fei 2017 M6 GT. Well, Zhao Fei, amazing um, a Chinese artist, um, third woman artist to tackle the series. What is great about her is, you know, BMW is going from um, a car manufacturer to mobility provider to a tech company. And we want, of course, to have that also be part of what it is that we do in culture. So Zhao Fei, it's not only the car, which was actually racing in Macau and was doing pretty good. Um, it is about creating an app, creating a video, creating augmented reality, creating um, a virtual reality around that car. So all of this together is the art car project, an immersive experience. And it was just great for a young Chinese artist to take us into the 21st century. So the art is developing. Thomas, yes. one question is, how do you guys choose the car and the artist? Well, the one great thing is, is that we don't have any say in who the artist will be. We leave that to the experts. That is international museum directors, chief creators from around the world, from all continents, pick the artist. We, of course, pick the car. It's 2020. You've got 19 cars designed. Wouldn't be a good match to have a new art car right now. Art car number 20 in 2020. That would have been lovely, but it's not happening. But we are in the process, of course, to continue the series. Why wouldn't we? To our community, if they're got, you made them really hot now uh, and they want to see the cars, where are those cars on display? Well, the home of the BMW art cars is the BMW Museum. So there's at least one car on display all the time. 
Many of these cars are of course in high demand when it comes to shows by Warhol, by Koons, by Olafur Eliasson. Um, you know, curators want to show them around the world in museums and we of course want to loan those cars. They're kind of goodwill ambassadors for our brand but also for this amazing thing that can happen when you know, designers and artists work together on a car. So Thomas, which one is your favorite then? Well, you know, I have three kids and they always ask me, who do you love the most, Daddy? And it would be the same with the BMW art cars. You know, it's hard for me to pick and I wouldn't be able to pick. Your Q&A kind of gave it away, which ones I'm more favorite and less favorite of. But if I had to go for one, I'd always go with Alexander Calder. It's the first one, the trajectory, the whole nucleus, everything started from there. Without that car by Alexander Calder from 1975, there wouldn't be any other. Thomas, you're a real professor about BMW art cars. And you can keep the book. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was nice talking to you. Yes. And thanks for all the information. Thank you very much for watching BMW Today. BMW Art Cars, racing and arts comes together explained in an easy and exciting way. That was very, very cool. If you like it, drop us some comments and likes down here and stay with us, there's more to come.